Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Bermuda, and thank you for coming. We're here today to discuss the challenges we face with the government budget. This government has made it very clear for over two years now that budget cuts were required. We put in place a track of 7% cut, a 5% cut, a 3% cut to get us into a sustainable position where we could move government forward in a proper approach. Government has ex explored many different options as we've gone through this process. The unions are obviously opposed to many of these options. It started out with commercialization last year, and this would have included the protection of jobs as we work through that, through the public reform bill. It was argued that we weren't being collaborative about it. So we came together and we worked with the BTUC. We put a working group together to discuss and negotiate with them through the technical officers and through Mr. Phillips and his team to try to find ways that we could reduce government spending. From the outset, the terms of reference was very clear to the working group that we would have to recognize that the furlough day contribution would be on the table. The BTUC refused to acknowledge and to debate that issue. They put it aside. The minutes show that. BPSU president is not being straight in the paper today when he says that that matter was never on the table. It was discussed early. They refused to discuss it further. Union have presented many different proposals. We've worked through those with finance and the technical officers and the team that met, met with them. And each one of those proposals was considered and some realistic savings have been found. The total value of the savings through those working groups has it added up to about $37 million. We disagree with the assertion by the BTUC that they found $85 million. It just didn't add up that way. Many of these proposals have been factored into the 2015-2016 budget. We have communicated that to the unions. They have also agreed to look at reducing overtime from double time to down to straight time or time in a quarter. We have agreed to discuss that. We've agreed, as they suggested, that there will be a freeze on hiring and any positions within government that became vacant would have to be filled only if they were essential. And those positions, the request would be made to the Ministry of Finance and the Cabinet Office to sign off on those going forward. Government has also agreed to another early retirement program. Let me be very clear, as the Minister of Finance can elucidate much more clearly than me, that all of these options are difficult to put a budget number on. The simple fact is you don't know how many people will apply for early retirement, you don't know how many positions within government will come available and won't be filled. So it's difficult to budget in and put a number on there, but they could be some reasonable savings going forward. We've communicated this to the union very clearly. We've also communicated to the union when they came yesterday at the first rally that uh, they asked us to rescind the furlough day. We said that was not possible at this point. All options must be on the table. We went away agreed to come back and have another meeting. I spoke to Union President early today after trying to get him a few times last night to apologize for not being able to get the team over to the meeting. And why did that happen? Because when we sent people over to discuss and negotiate, we wanted to make sure that they walked into the room and that there were proposals on the table if were agreed to that Cabinet had already agreed to. We weren't in a position to do that. I called an emergency cabinet meeting at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and we met until after 8 o'clock last night. We have more proposals to put to the union that we think can offer significant savings. However, none of these decisions are easy. They all are very difficult to make. We're willing to work through those with the BTUC if they are willing to come back to the table and contribute. And until we have this opportunity, we really can't go any further on this process on trying to deal with their concerns. Now, a couple of questions that you might have, and I'll preempt. Clearly, if you cut services, it will mean the vast majority of the time you will cut people. We've made that clear to the union as they've gone through the process of trying to cut services. 
it will mean that people will be cut. To date, there have been no positions, no people within the civil service who have been cut or made redundant. We don't want to put anybody out of work. We want to keep everybody at work. But the fact of the matter is, we're spending much more than we're taking in. It is simply unsustainable. So in spite of all the emotion inside this room, outside this room, as we were elected to lead, we have to lead with clear, rational minds. If you're taking in less than you're spending, you've got a problem. We're trying to come up with realistic cuts to still provide the services the people of Bermuda expect and need, and at the same time reduce the government budget to a sustainable level. One other point I want to make in regards to spending. If you look back at government spending and revenue of the past couple of years, we've spent much more than we've earned. I've said that. That's not the only problem that we have. We have something else called capital expenditure, which runs the last couple of years about 60 odd million. And we tried to cut that back as much as we can to make sure that we get spending under control. But when you do that, your facilities and your infrastructure struggle. So we have to balance that. That goes on top of the spending, makes the deficit higher. And the last thing we should cons consider, my number's not quite accurate here, but it's very close. We are spending almost $120 million a year to furnish the deficit and cover the debt that we have and make the payments. $120 million a year. This year, it is anticipated that the government budget will lose $270 million. People of Bermuda, let me tell you something very clearly here today. When we go back into the markets to borrow, whenever that time comes, the rest of the world does not care about Bermuda. They just want to know how we delivered on our promises, how we improve the economy moving forward, and how we pay the debt. If we don't keep up with those promises, the next time we go back, yes, we'll probably find some money. It will cost us a lot more, and we'll dig ourselves in a deeper hole. Well, I used to play football. I used to kick the ball all the time. But time has stopped for us to kick that ball down the road. We need to deal with the challenges we face. And for all of those people that are upset with the concerns that we have of putting all the options on the table, I understand where you come from. But I am not willing to jeopardize the future of current Bermudians and future Bermudians for decisions that we're making today. So having said that, open for questions, and my colleagues will be happy to answer as well. Nia will control the questions, please. Um, I would allow the Minister of Finance to say to add more on if uh, he would wish, but that's a hard number to peg because you don't know who's going to leave. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult number. That's, that's a retirement number you can focus in there. That's something that we've factored in already in, into those plans. We've made that commitment to the unions. I'm disappointed to hear that because at the working group discussion stage, I wasn't made aware of that. And I got constant reports about that. Mr. Marino, that was raised late in our discussions. If somebody is serious about doing something to correct something, they bring it up when they find out about it, not as a negotiating ploy. And that's why we've taken these serious steps now that there'll be a freeze in hiring and any posts that are vacant at this time will not be filled unless the Ministry of Finance or the Cabinet Office signs on. So we'll stop the rot. If there's rot, we'll stop the rot. Yeah, Premier, um, you, you talked about emotion inside and outside. Um, I want to address the emotion inside, inside your cabinet. Um, one of the things that upsets the union, from what I gather, is the manner in which um, your finance minister delivered the communication unions, um, specifically that he basically threatened to shut down the government if they didn't do it, they didn't accept further. Um, and 
and it was delivered by a private sector person, from what I understand. Do you think that was appropriate? Let me answer your question in two ways. First, everyone has their own personalities. The Minister of Finance, who has my greatest respect and support, is very direct in how he communicates. The letter, in my opinion, was acceptable. We are at the latest stages of putting this budget together. Now is the time to make decisions. We have to set a time frame to move forward. Secondly, it was delivered by an individual who was within the parameters of the working group, so not an unusual person to go and deliver a letter to them. So you stand behind the minister on that regard? Most certainly I do. Um, obviously there's an impasse. What, what do you think can be done now? I mean, That's a good question. That's a good question. And as I said to Mr. Ferbert when we spoke this morning, that we're happy to come back to the table. We're ready to go back to the table. We believe we have some viable options to put on the table. And Mr. Ferbert said until furlough's taken off, they're not coming back to the table. We can't negotiate with them like that. Everything must be on the table. Remember, this government is on record that we want to protect the jobs, but we have to improve the current spending that goes on at this point. Mr. Marino. Mr. Marino. Be, no, because when I, when I discussed with uh, Mr. Ferbert um, the parameters getting back, he wasn't willing to discuss anymore. And I wasn't about to put the options over a telephone call. Our team is ready and willing to meet any time they call.